afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this week's Middle East and Africa Forum for Sustainability Leaders podcast, uh, a part of a campaign that we've recently launched for COP28, 12 weeks, 12 podcasts, 100 voices, culminating in a live event that's taking place on November 22nd at NYU Abu Dhabi. We're uh, lucky to be joined here today with our special guest speaker, Florence Bulte, Chief Sustainability Officer at Chalhoub Group. Thank you very much, Florence, for joining the show. Good afternoon, and it's a pleasure to be with you. I first just wanted to start with an overall general question. You've been with the company for many years, uh, obviously the Chief Sustainability Officer now. How is the need for a CSO first identified within the organization? What was the, the process like for instituting that position and uh, understanding that there needed to be ownership in that space to drive things forward? Yeah, so first, I mean, to set a bit of the context, you know, Shagu Group has been operating in the Gulf and the region for over 65 years, and it's a family business. So we are retailer and distributor of luxury products in the Middle East, but because also it's a family business, I would say sustainability has always been part of our core uh, values. This being said, we've been uh, starting like any other group, you know, by uh, employee engagement, community giving. Uh, in 2009, we had a quite well-structured uh, strategy for employee engagement and community giving. And in 2014, I think the turning point was that we became a member of the United Nations Global Compact. And uh, with this membership, uh, you know, came the obligation to report uh, on our sustainability effort on a yearly basis. So we, that's when I came into the picture, so in 2015, and uh, we developed a strategy, sustainability strategy for the group, uh, which allowed us to, you know, to, to take a stock take of uh, what was happening, uh, what were uh, the points where we wanted to uh, focus on, so based on the materiality study. Uh, so we selected some points of focus and we built the strategy and from then on, you know, all the effort uh, we did was to implement and to embed uh, the strategy uh, within the group. So that it was a journey. The journey is not finished. We started with a very small team. We're still small and uh, it's on purpose because we believe uh, sustainability is not only the role of the CSO, you know, it's the role of uh, each and every person, each and every team member in the group. Uh, so it's it's really, uh, you know, it, it started uh, quite, uh, I would say, uh, uh, smoothly and uh, we became more and more uh, structured uh, and I will discuss it later, but, uh, you know, being part of uh, initiatives like UNGC really supported our structuration. In terms of structure, we actually had a conversation with Raji Hatar, for, you know, the CSO of Aramex, not too yes. long ago. And I think he echoed the same sentiment in terms of keeping things small uh, within the team and trying to embed that throughout the organization instead of having your own, let's say, pillar in a sense. But from your perspective, uh, obviously, I imagine sustainability crosses all functions, uh, right? So, and, and you know, it requires a lot of collaboration internally. Um, what is your recommendations in terms of how to communicate those sustainability opportunities across those functions, across different teams. Um, you know, I imagine it's a different language in terms of translating what those opportunities are and those benefits to try to embed that culture. So you have to look at it as a, as a matrix, but for me, the starting point is uh, the reporting to the CEO. Uh, you need to have, uh, you know, the, 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 the voice needs to come from the top. Uh, so I'm reporting to the CEO, and I think this is crucial. You know, you cannot report to any other uh, business unit uh, because you also need to to keep your uh, freedom of execution and, uh, you know, uh, thinking, uh, etc. And it needs to be aligned also with the strategy, the business strategy of the group. So this is for me the starting point. Then, I mean, I can just uh, share, uh, you know, how we are structured in terms of governance. I think the most important thing is to have a sustainability committee. So as you were saying, uh, for us, it's cross-functional. So I animate it, but it's chaired by uh, our president. Uh, and we have a representative of uh, finance, logistics, supply chain, uh, facility management, architect for us, because, you know, we're building a lot of stores, uh, HR, uh, obviously. Uh, so what we do we, as a sustainability team, Team, we present our strategy and we present also how we uh, implement this strategy, the results, uh, etc. But it's not, uh, 
an advisory uh, committee. It's really a hands-on committee. And also this is extremely important because if you want to embed, you know, whatever strategy you have, you need this uh, representative of uh, different business units and services to to uh, run with the bond, you know, like to 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 take what's uh, pertaining to their business unit and implement it uh, within their team. Uh, so for me, that's the only way it can trickle down, uh, you know, to uh, each and every level of the company. So then, uh, obviously, from a communication point of view, I would say. Now, you're using the term communication. Uh, I'm using more the term of, uh, you know, awareness and education. Uh, so we communicate our uh, performance, uh, the news uh, through the uh, executive committee. Uh, we have also a board internally called NEXT, which is a youth uh, board made of uh, youth uh, uh, young team members. Uh, so it's like a sounding board and we prepare, we uh, we are presenting specific uh, ideas. For example, we have one coming up, uh, which is about circular economy. Uh, so, you know, it's helping also having the voice and the opinion of the, of the youth, which is extremely uh, important. And of course, we are part of each and every uh, seminar, the group seminar, where, uh, the country seminars, because we know we are operating in more than eight countries. Uh, so that's also how the information, the education, the awareness is uh, trickling down. We do have uh, relays in each and every country. So we have a sustainability relay, which is uh, really uh, implementing the corporate strategy at the country level. And we have what we call uh, impact uh, uh, leaders. Uh, so because our strategy is called the impact. So we have champions, if you will, uh, which, is, which are also uh, very educated about what does it mean specifically for Shalou, what does sustainability mean. So they are also able to educate their team members and to participate to various uh, events uh, we, are, we are doing. So if you take this uh, matrix, it's allowing us to, uh, you know, fill the gaps and uh, enter each and every level of the company. Wow, it uh, seems like a very big remit with a lot of things going on, which is great. I think... Um, just going back to the, your answer on the first one, of course, you know, mentioned stock take and COP28 this year is, is about the global stock take and also developing a strategy. And I think there's some companies that might be farther down the, the journey in the road and some who are just kind of starting now. What advice would you give in, in terms of where to even begin in creating that strategy? Where do you begin in creating this matrix that you, you uh, of course, are referring to? Um, do you go for low hanging fruits first, like cost reduction? Or do you have to kind of break things down a little, a little bit more before you can create your blueprint? Honestly, it's uh, by uh, running a materiality study. So you ask your uh, your various stakeholders. So you ask your external uh, stakeholders, your shareholders, your customers. In our case, uh, you ask your partners, you ask your uh, team members. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, progressively you, uh, you define the priorities where our point of focus, the non-negotiable, and, and, uh, and, and then you, uh, you know, progressively you, uh, again, you know, it's a journey, so you have your priority, what's important for the group, what makes sense, business sense, because, you know, it's always uh, linked to, uh, to business at the end of the day. And uh, and and uh, what we do normally, we review it every two to three years. We uh, because it's not set into concrete either. So you need to uh, check your environment. You know the evolution of the, for example, the regulations, the economic context, uh, etc. Your competitors, and you uh, you always evolve this uh, materiality study and adapt your strategy. Uh, uh, over the years, but I think for, for, for me, that this is the starting point. You need to have the opinion and the, um, the, the view of your various stakeholders. And then, of course, uh, you know, again, a, main, a major stakeholder in that strategy are all the employees themselves. Um, so how do you, from your, your perspective, what is the best way to get employees uh, more involved in the overall sustainability strategies? And then, of course, um, incentives to do so and being able to also benchmark and, and, and monitor it and measure the impact of that. 
honestly, it's uh, education because you you can hardly be engaged or involved or passionate about something you don't understand. And uh, I would say it's not a problem with sustainability, but it's very wide. You know, like we're speaking about social matters, we're speaking about environmental matters, governance matters. So it's very difficult for people to grasp uh, the, the overall idea. So what we do, we have a sustainability week uh, where we have a lot of uh, events, uh, webinar, uh, exper experiential uh, initiatives uh, that we offer in all the countries to our uh, team members. Um, and, and from there, they are able to, uh, to grasp a bit more uh, the initiative. And we give also, when I was talking about the impact leaders, before it was only about employee engagement, giving back to the community. Now we are trying to uh, uh, engage and involve our team members into uh, uh, very specific uh, activities like recycling, for example. So for now we have... Uh, 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 an initiative about um, VMing. So, how can we uh, reduce, you know, the amount of uh, material we produce? How we can uh, optimize the use of this VM virtu 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 uh, visual merchandising material? Uh, how how do we optimize the use before, um, you know, uh, uh, disposing of it? So, so we have very practical. Uh, uh, workshops with the with all the VMs. We give them also solutions, which company to use, not use, uh, etc. So, uh, again, uh, when I was saying at the beginning, it's a very hands-on exercise. Uh, it, it is very hands-on, and you can only achieve your targets if you uh, uh, leverage, you know, the energy and of each and every uh, team members uh, and the skills also of each and every uh, skill, uh, team member. So that's how, so a lot of education awareness, but also a lot of uh, involvement in very uh, specific uh, initiatives, like these VM initiatives, but we have many more. And you also mentioned the, the hands-on aspect of engaging with youth as well. Um, and so I think a lot of the conversations that we have as well with other stakeholders is trying to identify and develop sustainability talent for the future. Um, what are your, your thoughts on, on that area? What exactly, I mean, we're, we're talking sustainability, as you mentioned, so wide ranging, the skill sets that um, are, are most needed, um, you know, what what steps are, are needed to be taken to make everyone a CSO moving forward, essentially, right, <laughs> at the end of the day? Well, it's very interesting because uh, first, to answer your, your question, I would say uh, we don't have that many problems uh, to convince the younger generation. The younger generation is, is a no-brainer. Like, yeah. uh, you know, they... Uh, I mean, uh, I, I have uh, many, many calls with uh, people who are just onboarding uh, and, uh, and and want to know, uh, you know, what we are doing, how they can support, how they can help, uh, etc. Um, the the only thing, I mean, the other thing I would say is that uh, you know, uh, like CSO, it's a uh, it's a gener generational um, uh, goal. Like you know, like I, I cannot achieve whatever we have to achieve just during my uh, tenure of this uh, uh, of this role. So I, we need to pass it on to a generation and generation. So, uh, but again, for me, from my experience, because we are also working with a lot of universities, education is one uh, major point of focus uh, for us. So we have huge partnerships with uh, a lot of universities in the Middle East and, uh, and in Europe. And, and, and to be honest, um, it's very easy to, uh, to, to seek the engagement of, uh, of the students. And I would say their interest is, uh, is, is only ESG. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, diversity, inclusion, equity, environment, uh, food for. Uh, uh, so that's also what we're trying to do. We're trying to capture their interest and to educate even before they, they join a company, even if they join us or not, but you know, we we're trying to be there right at the beginning. We recently had a conversation with Talibat um, and asking you know, what are the, what what are the skill sets of a CSO as well, and talking about strategy and be able to action and implement blueprints and you know, not always sustainability in that sense, but someone who can bring things forward and bring it to life. Um, and 
also from your perspective, just coming outwards a little bit, you've had so much experience in the region, of course, you know, across the Middle East. Uh, what do you see really as the role of CSOs and leaders of sustainability and also the drive towards sustainability? How do you see the, that different from, let's say, the UAE or the region versus globally? Well, um, honestly, it's uh, the, 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 the core of the role uh, doesn't differ uh, that much. But of course, we have, uh, let's say, uh, cont the context in the Middle East is, uh, is different. So, for example, when we, uh, when we talk about uh, climate uh, action or, uh, or uh, energy or et cetera, we, we have a specific situation, water scarcity, for example, water scarcity is a huge issue uh, in, the, in the region. So as CSO, we would be more geared towards, uh, you know, uh, protecting the, the, the water uh, consumption. Uh, would have uh, one of, the, um, of uh, the main focus for us would be transitioning or supporting the transition uh, from oil and gas to more uh, green energy energy, so supporting a just transition, uh, you know, to greener energy, which is uh, one of the specific uh, problems of, uh, of the region. Uh, one other difference, I think, might be the regulatory uh, context, uh, because you may have some, uh, you know, in Europe and the States, uh, they may have a, a system which is more uh, structured, uh, uh, whereas here, you know, we are just at the beginning of uh, of uh, having regulation. So I'm not, I mean, too much regulation, peer of the regulation. We all agree on that. And uh, but but still, you know, like it it helps. So we are just at the beginning. So we are at the moment. If you ask me, all the CSO are, are supporting or want uh, would like to support the government into shaping uh, uh, some regulations. And then I would say when you look at all the SDGs. Um, well, we have some uh, some specific uh, SDGs we would be looking at uh, in the regions, like uh, uh, maybe gender, uh, gender parity, education. I was mentioning education. For us, education is uh, is uh, is very important uh, to make sure that you know it's it's a young uh, population, so we want to make sure they are ready uh, to enter uh, the professional world. Climate action for sure. Uh, sustainability sustainable cities and communities also is one of the main points of focus on the, of the region and of course uh, everything dealing with innovation and access to uh, technology uh, etc so 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 there are some differences but the the core it's more linked to the context of the region but the core i would say of the role is uh, is the same yeah, uh, regulatory, but also I think, uh, geez, if you look at the UAE and, and Saudi, how fast they're moving with so many things. You mentioned smart, sustainable cities, circular economy programs. It seems like everything's sprinting in every direction at once. Um, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know, that, that's a, you, it's, it's an interesting point because from an observer, uh, you, can, you can think, you know, it's going into, in a lot of direction because it's a wide subject. But that's yeah. why as a companies, we need to, referring back to your first question, we need to be very clear about our post point of focus and what makes a bigger impact for us as a group, you know. So we have our point of focus and, you know, like uh, everything is interlinked, actually. We, it's, a, it's a systemic uh, thing. So by helping, uh, by helping, let's say, the group having a bigger impact, we are, in fact, helping the community and the country to have a bigger impact. Yeah. What do you think are, because along there, there's a lot of progress being made, right? And, and of course, you know, one thing to focus on is is that clear vision. Um, but also, the, you know, there's a lot of, I would say, solutions out there for climate change at the moment, but some of them seem, and even model circular economy to be stuck, let's say, in the lab a little bit more. What do you think the challenges are in terms of scaling up those solutions and deploying those solutions? Well, uh, it needs to make business sense. So uh, I can uh, I can give you a very uh, simple uh, example because uh, circular economy is really one of one of our major point of focus. Uh, we have uh, we have a strategy team here, and we're doing a lot of uh, market studies, uh, you know, amongst the luxury uh, industry. 
And uh, some years back, we've noticed that 60% um, of our customers, for example, in luxury, would be ready to buy uh, pre-loved items. So we started uh, with Level Shoes, which uh, you know is our um, shoe and uh, bags concept. We, we started to have a, a pre-loved uh, offering. And it's working well because it was based on a business need. It was based on a consumer uh, needs. So I, I, I think the, when the, that's why we need to be really in tune uh, with the market to see you know, what your customer wants, have a customer-centric approach, and based on that, uh, develop business models which would uh, cater to this demand. You know, not, not because we want to offer it, but because uh, it, it's, uh, it's answering our customers' uh, need. It seems that um, 20 minutes goes by pretty quickly on the podcast. Okay. I think we're just wrapping up. But before we wrap up, I just wanted to, to get your final thoughts. Of course, COP28 is coming up. Um, what are you looking at in terms of uh, positive outcomes from COP28? What do you think will be at the top of the agenda? And what would you think would be um, success? Well, I mean, so success. Uh, know, for me, COP twenty eight is not is not an end. For me, it's, it's just the beginning. You know, right. so it's success a blip for in me, the timeline. Yeah. No, so success for me would be to. Uh, and you were speaking about CSO. We're seeing now a lot of uh, companies who want to have a sustainability team, who want to appoint a CSO. Well, for me, it needs to perdure. It needs to be sustainable. You know, we it, it, it's a success if. Uh, you know, all this ecosystem, all the companies in the Middle East would uh, would understand well the need uh, that sustainability is an integral integral part of uh, of the business success. And if they build a team and a strategy that would last in time, you know. So for me, uh, only this would be a success because you you see a lot of companies who are uh, coming uh, slowly to the reality of sustainability. We have we are part of UNGC, so we see a lot of SMEs uh, asking themselves, okay, but it's only for big companies because you need a lot of resources and things like that. And we want to. Uh, to say, and, and we're saying, no, it's for everybody, you know, whatever your size, whatever uh, you are, uh, micro enterprises, whatever. And for me, if COP28, from this perspective, managed to, of course, you have the stock take and everything, which is, you know, the bigger picture. But but in a very practical terms, if uh, the companies in the UAE uh, manage to really understand and believe that there's something to play, uh, then that and, and make it sustainable, then for me, it would be a success. And you're right, you know, sustainability reaches everyone. I mean, we've had conversations yeah. with re renewable energy companies have just hired CSOs because they want to report on their sustainability strategies uh, all the way to SMEs. Um, but thank you very much, Florence, for your time. We really Thanks appreciate it and we appreciate your insights. Uh, for all those listening, please feel free to follow Florence on social media and, of course, Shalhoub Group uh, and, of course, Gulf Intelligence, where we will be publishing this interview and podcast and the insights from it. But thank you again very much, Florence. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.